my friends. Welcome back to Cafe Bagheri. Today, I'm going to make my most requested recipe, the Persian kubire kebab, arguably the most popular Iranian dish. So let's get started and make it. Okay, the first thing to do is to prepare our meat. Um, kubire is made with ground beef uh, or lamb. Back home in the old country, they use two to one ratio of lamb to beef or all lamb. The best cuts of uh, lamb or beef to use for kubire are the fattier parts. You, you don't want to use uh, real tender uh, cuts like tenderloin uh, uh, fillet uh, or ribeye. You leave those for your steaks and for your bag or chenje. But for kubire, we want to go with tougher cuts of meat like I have a brisket here. Um, we could have used flank steak or skirt steak. Um, but the important part is whether you use lamb or beef to use 80-20, 80% 80 red meat and 20% fat. So here's the trick I use, right? Whenever I'm smoking a brisket in the backyard, I use a part of it for kubide because I have a lot of fat on the brisket. I get to separate and weigh or just eyeball the 80-20 ratio and make kubide and then I smoke the rest of the brisket. As I said, this is a large 13 pounder. Um, the recipe that I'm giving you for kubide is for two pounds of meat, two pounds of ground beef that needs to have 80% of those two pounds be red meat and 20% fat. Let's just eyeball and decide that this much of it right here is about two pounds. The trick to making sure um, you got 80%, 20% is to separate as much of the fat from red meat initially as you can. The first question people had was, what's your um, secret for the kubide kebab not falling from the skewer? Throughout this video, we're gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna give you tips, about five or six tips. How do I prevent the kebab from falling from my skewer? The first one is make sure you have the right ratio of red meat and fat. The ideal is 80-20, okay? This is all red meat, as you can see. I separated almost all the fat. So that is one pound, three ounces. So we need more red meat. I go like this. I do another slice here. I've done this many times because like I said, we smoke a lot of brisket here. So this is how I get from the flat part of brisket. I cut out some red meat and fat. There you go. That's one pound, 10 ounces. That's 80% of two pounds, right? Now we're going to add enough fat to get to two pounds right here. So total is gonna be, like I said, two pounds or about 850 grams right under a kilogram. So I keep adding fat. By the way, the brisket video, smoking a brisket, that's upcoming. It's one of my favorite items. We're gonna do a video on that. There you go. That's two pounds of meat. It's got 80% red meat and 20% fat. As I said, one of the main, the first trick on doing the right kubi is to get the ratio of red meat and fat correct, and that's number one. Now we're gonna take this beef and grind it in my meat grinder. Like I said, uh, folks ask me, can we buy uh, ground meat from the market and do it? Absolutely, 80-20 beef. However, you need to do grind it a second time. You need it finer, and then we'll get to that. Let's grind our meat. First, you have to kind of chop it up in manageable pieces so you can run it through. There's no rhyme or reason to it, just make sure they're small enough. And then um, don't put all fat or all red meat in one stretch. Just cut them up and then alternate. You will see these big pieces of meat that are cut earlier. I'm gonna cut them into chunks. Okay, we're gonna turn on our machine here. On medium. Like I said, I go like 
four to one uh, red meat to fat. Like I said, you could use 80-20 uh, pre-ground meat that you buy from your market. I have had better success with Kubi Day when I grind my own meat, okay? So if you're doing Kubi Day once in a while and you want to get the best Kubi Day that you can make, grind your own meat. And always, if you end up buying pre-ground meat from the market, do grind it a second time yourself to get a finer grade of ground meat. So we've done our first grind on a, a bigger setting, uh, the screen on the meat grinder. If you notice, these are smaller settings. Uh, when you buy these grinders, you get two or three. There are more uh, sizes that you can order online, but I have two of them. So I did first grind with the bigger uh, holes, and this is the second. Now, so you get a finer ground meat, and that's one of the ways you make sure that your kebab doesn't fall off the skewer. All right. So this is our second grind. Very essential part of this recipe. What the second grind, the finer grind does, it ensures that the fat distributes more evenly throughout the uh, mass of whatever amount of meat you're using. So it's essential. This was the last of uh, the meat that we ran through the machine. I'm kind of frugal, so what I do is I make sure that every last bit of it has gone through. I kick the machine to the highest um, speed, so it pushes the meat through. And then when I open this, I scrape all the meat that's on the parts in the machine and they go back in the meat. They're usable and you make kebab with it. So now we're going to uh, grind our onions and our salted pepper is here. This is the traditional orthodox recipe for kubide. And it's like the salt and pepper of American brisket. You know, yes, you can put a lot of things in there, but salt, pepper, and onion is the bare bone, traditional, hundreds of years old um, seasoning. You don't want to like make a mush. You want to have flakes, recognizable flakes. So the amount of ground onions, onion flakes that goes in kubide is about 20, to 25% of your meat, uh, ground meat mixture by weight. So since we have two pounds of um, ground beef here, about six or seven ounces of um, onion flakes should do it. This was about nine ounces. So I can afford to throw these chunks away and not worry about it. See all of that juice, we don't need it. The objective now is to squeeze as much of the juice out of the onion mush, if you will, as possible. I can use a cheesecloth, a kitchen cheesecloth, or I can use a sieve like this, whatever works for you. They both have the same end result. I basically go like this, kind of push it through. See that? Now, you can um, throw away the onion juice or you can keep it and I'll, I'll show you uh, how to use it in the final sauce that we make to baste and brush over our kebab before serving it. This is the next point to prevent it from falling in the fire off your uh, skewer. If your onion is too moist, your kebab is gonna fall from the skewer. Remember, uh, get as much of the moisture and, and onion juice out of the uh, shredded onions but leave some moisture in there. You don't want dry flakes. But certainly don't just shred the onions and put the flakes in there, um, ground meat, because that's a recipe for disaster. So look at this. This is what I meant about the fine balance. Right now, I have this much juice out of one medium to small onion, about 20% of the weight of my meat. Um, so what I'm doing here, if I was to push on this onion, I would get some more juice, a few more rounds of moisture out of this, but I'm gonna leave the rest in here. That's how much moisture you need in your onion, right? Put the onion back in here. Now we're going to put our salt and pepper 
on the onions. Uh, I usually first put all of the seasoning in the onion flakes and then add it to the ground meat. I need a teaspoon of salt. You can use table salt or kosher salt. In this case, I had table salt available. Then I'm gonna do half a teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper. The reason I'm doing it on the um, little plate is so that I can gather it all up and be able to measure half a teaspoon. All right, I think this is half to three quarter teaspoon. That's good. There you go. So we have our onion, our salt. The next essential part of making sure that your kebab doesn't fall off the skewer into the fire, it's to massage the meat thoroughly, kind of like you're kneading your dough. You have to do at least five minutes, five to eight minutes of mixing and kneading. See, I have my onion, my pepper, and my salt. This is what you do. You go around, bring it up, and then push it down. Kind of like when you're kneading the dough. You have two reasons for doing this. One is obviously for onion, salt, and pepper to be distributed fully and evenly all through this mix. Right now, the fat particles and red meat particles are not really fused together. One of the essential requirements is for that fat to be well incorporated and infused to the red, with the red meat. The way you achieve that is by massaging this mixture thoroughly. Restaurants usually have machines like the dough, with dough hook and all that that does this, but even them at the end, right before, see once in a while you find a piece of onion this big, you get rid of it. Okay, the meat is uh, kneaded and done. The, the last couple of drops that I did is to make sure it's all compacted, any air pockets in the middle of the meat is eliminated and pushed together. So now this meat is ready to go on skewers and on a hot fire, but it needs to be completely chilled. So this is the next tip. To make sure that your meat stays on the skewer when you put it on fire, it needs to be as cold as possible. So we made our Kubide mix and put it in the fridge. It's been in there for two days. We wanted to film the making of Kubide and, and goje, goje, the um, tomatoes, the next day. But some came up and we waited a couple of days. And guess what? Snow in Dallas, Texas. We never get snow here. It's been very cold, but finally we have snowfall. We're going to cook our Kubide on charcoal today. We could do it on gas grill as long as your fire is super hot. Kubide needs super hot fire. Let's do this. Check this out. This is the meat that's been in the refrigerator for a couple of days, very cold. So you need to mix it all up again to kind of get it a little softer, but it still needs to be cold, remember? Now, I know that this is about two pounds of meat, about eight to 900 grams. Uh, makes about six Kubide skewers, about 130 to 140 uh, grams per skewer. Now, one of the ways, again, to, uh, to make sure your kebab stays on the skewer is to chill your skewers. Well, guess what? Let's get the snow off of them so it's not wet. And this is for our tomatoes. One skewer, I have two Roma tomatoes. This is a must with your grilled tomatoes are a definite companion with your juje kebab and with your kubide, okay? And try to get firm ones, don't get ripe tomatoes. You can get beef steak or Roma tomatoes. Make sure you understand where the heat zone, the maximum heat zone of your grill is. So when you put the skewer on your grill, gas or charcoal, uh, let's say the charcoal is right here. Make sure you put the kebab right 
in the sweet spot of where the highest heat is gonna be, right? I know this is gonna be six portions, so I go like this to make sure there's no air pockets in the middle. Now, once in a while, you, when your hand becomes too sticky, in order to make sure you can work this ball of um, meat mixture, you put your hand in the water, and then what I'm doing is I'm kind of pushing the kebab mixture down the skewer. Remember the overall size of this piece of kebab? I've measured where it's gonna be and how much kebab I'm gonna have on each skewer. Now each one of these, the way I do it, there's several ways to do this. You can use your two fi uh, first fingers like that. I do it so that we end up with little pieces known as lorme, which is bite. So once your final kebab is off of the skewer, each one of these guys becomes one bite. This is what we're going for. Okay, there you go, next one. I kind of make sure that it doesn't have any air pockets in there. Start pushing it down like this first before you start forming it. Now, if you take too long putting your kebab mixture onto the skewer on a, uh, under normal circumstances, it becomes sort of too warm. Um, and if you're fixing your fire or getting your grill hot, you wanna put them back in the refrigerator. But like I said earlier, we're already in a freezer in the backyard. So thankfully we do not have that problem today. Again, we make sure it's solid. You first, again, you first stretch it down, then you go back over it on both sides to get the shape you want. Okay, we're ready to go. We're going to go make sure our fire is ready. The good news is, like I said, if I was inside under normal circumstances, I would put this back in the fridge while I'm preparing my fire. We're in the freezer, so we're gonna make our fire. Our fire is almost ready. Kebabs on the skewer, our tomatoes are ready. I'm gonna make the sauce. Now, in the, in the old country, they make the sauce out of butter, lime juice, saffron, and some spices, and the onion juice. Remember when we squeezed the juice out of shredded onions? Some of it and regular water is used with the butter to make the sauce that you can then Brush on your kebab, you can use the sauce for your juje, for your chicken kebab, or your kubide, or your steak kebabs, the bag or chenje. There you go. We're just on the edge of this fire, and I believe, so we're gonna throw 100 grams of butter, which is one, about one stick, and then we're gonna add all the rest of the ingredients, except the lime juice. Lime juice should go in last, because if you boil lime or lemon juice, for a little more than a minute, it's gonna be bitter. So lime juice goes in just at the end, okay? So I'm gonna put aside the lime juice right here. We put the water with the butter, put the onion juice. We put our spices, this is cinnamon, ground cinnamon. Look for the re um, recipe details in the bottom. It's uh, ground black pepper, fresh ground cumin, uh, which is zire in Farsi, this is just salt. And our champion saffron solution. So our sauce is all melted and mixed up. We got butter and all this uh, um, ingredients in there. We're gonna put the lime juice in there. Remember, don't boil the lime juice for a long time. This is pretty much ready now. We're gonna put it aside right here, can stay warm. And I have my brush. Remember, this sauce is called carry top. Carry is butter, top is ap applying or getting all over, carry top. You can brush on all of your kebabs or you can put it in a pan and then once the skewers come off the fire, you put it in, in this sauce, turn it and then get it off the skewer ready to eat. Now we're gonna put our kebab on the fire. Next point on preventing your kebab from falling in the fire is that 
you get a firm skin on all sides of your kebab as soon as possible, which means by the time you've put the last skewer on, you go back to the first one, you let it cook for about 10, 15 seconds, then you go back to the first one and you turn it. See that? See, it's already formed a little skin. So we're basically starting from the first one. See the difference here? That, that's got a little skin on there. If I didn't have this electric fan, I would be using a piece of cardboard or a board and just going, now we're gonna turn again. We're gonna put the tomato on right here. Check this out. Turning again from here. See, it was starting to separate and, and have a tendency to see right there. But if you keep turning, you prevent that. Things I wanna tell you about this business of not allowing kebab to fall into the fire. Some people add a little bit of uh, egg whites in the kebab mix. Others add a port about 10% of chicken in the ground meat because chicken is kind of sticky. Oh shit, it fell. But if you keep turning, you prevent that. Okay, so our kebab is almost ready. We're gonna start putting the sauce on it. It will create some flare up, but you have to turn your kebab and you can put the sauce on your tomatoes as well, by the way. We're gonna turn and apply some more. There you go. To the other side, do our tomatoes and apply some sauce. Just a little more, there you go. Now we're ready to pull this kebab off of fire. So I have some tortilla breads, you can use lavash or, or any kind of flat bread. You release the end first. There you go. And then we apply some more of this wonderful butter saffron sauce on everything. By the way, this bread, the bread under the kebab is something people fight over. It's a delicacy. Nunazir kebab, bread under the kebab. All right, check this out. So I got my kebab now in with um, Persian saffron rice. I got some tadik, which is a crunchy potato at the bottom of the pot. It turned out great. This is awesome. So remember, keep the meat cold, your fire hot. Um, the onions should be juiced, um, have a little moisture, and, and keep it cold and put it on that hot fire. Keep turning the skewers. And if it, something doesn't work, retry and get your technique perfected. Please like this video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Hit that little bell button so we can keep in touch. Make this Kubi day. Send me your pictures. I'll love to see them. CafeBagiri.com. Keep in touch, okay? I'll see you here very soon.